thanks for joining us at the table. I'm Fiona and I'm joined by these awesome ladies, Rachel, Rachel and Shona. Shona the showstopper. <laughs> I haven't seen you guys in a long time. It's good to see you ladies. You too. Now this week we talk about car sharing. We also talk about volunteerism and Jane Gibson Opatire is here with us. She's here from International Children's Care Australia. So we'll be chatting with her. Please stick around for that. Don't forget you can hit us up on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube. The table TV com is where it's at so keep it locked but first up would you share your car with a stranger now companies like go get and car next door have taken sydney by storm in fact one in five residents in the city of sydney council alone are members of the go get car sharing company shona car sharing something that's you know in, in your vocab, would you would you share your vehicle with a complete I, stranger? I have no idea what you're talking about. I live on the central coast. We don't share cars. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so what are you talking well, about? Look, the idea is you just sign up. You uh, sign up online, um, register your details. You have to have a licence. You pay a membership fee and you pretty much have access to a vehicle instantaneously for short and long-term trips. Works for people in the city. Yeah, it works mm. especially if you don't have a car or if you don't use one that often. So it would yeah. work really well. Yeah, well, while, while your car's sitting there, if you... Cause so if you're in the city, walk, yeah, yeah. To work. I think if you're in the city, it makes sense. It's like having a gym membership, you know, a gym membership to cars to have access to them. If I lived in the city, most definitely I would use it. Not living in the city, I think it's so impractical. You know, like I need a car now. I need to go to the grocery store. I need to take Dax to an appointment. So and as a mom, it's not not working for I, you. Not I think it's not even the mom. I think it's the location of yeah. where I live. Right. I yeah. think I'd have to be in a place in an apartment building, maybe where parking was hard, where I could easily walk to the grocery store, walk to my kids' school. I think in my situation, it doesn't work. Yeah, I mean, you can borrow it for long term for people that can't afford to have a car. It might work for them. It's mm. like paying, I think, thirty dollars a month in some instances. Wow, is yeah. it that? Yeah. So you avoid the cost of paying, you know, your registration fees, yeah, service insurance. fees and all that. So parking, there is benefits. Mm. parking in the city is expensive. Yes, mm. well, I mean, the idea is to take cars off the roads. I mean, it's great for pollution, yep. don't you mm. think? That I don't environmentally, know if it's, it's great. I don't know if it's that cheap, though, that it's $30. When I was looking, I saw some services. Some people have said it's not cheaper than having a car. It but depends it's more... how often you use it, because yeah. you can have a, a minimal plan. You, yeah. know, you use it a lot regularly each month, so it is different. Some people only want it for a trip to the to the shops, you know, do your groceries, or even just to visit a friend that lives out west, southwest Sydney, if you travel. <laughs> out there in the sticks, you know, talks about now to get there, so it would work for what's, people. What's wrong with public transport? Well, I mean, that's what it encourages, because if you're not, if you don't have a car, it encourages people to get out there, physical activity, I mean, it, there's benefits to, mm. you know, car sharing. Um, it's taking 10 cars off the road, so that's I think conceptually it's great, but I think mm. with the living situation, it's not necessarily practical, you know. Um, if more people start going to urban centres and there's more grocery stores within walking distance, it makes sense. But you can pay up, like it can cost you, you know, roughly $10,000 a year just to have a car sitting there, I mean, using it when you need to. So much cheaper to do this if, you know, you don't have the car, you don't have the money. I think this is a great option. Good yeah. on them. Yeah, and I think it's cheaper in some instances than hiring a car. Yeah. So, yeah, look, it's definitely something to look into. What do you think about car sharing? Would you share your car with a complete stranger? We'd love to know. Hit us up on Facebook, Instagram or YouTube. But now it's time for Mandy Makes. Let's check this out. With summer upon us and the temperatures heating up, no one wants to get to the end of the day and walk past someone and go, whoa, they need some deodorant. So I'm going to teach you how to make a really simple deodorant paste that will keep you smelling fresh all day long. We're going to start off by putting 30 grams of coconut oil into a glass jug. So we've got 30 grams of coconut oil. It doesn't matter if your coconut oil is solid because we are going to be melting all of this very soon. Our next ingredient we're going to put in here is 20 grams of shea butter. So our shea butter has our moisturising properties in it, which will really help to keep your skin looking and feeling really nice. Next up, we're going to add about 10 grams of a carrier oil. I like to use sweet almond oil, but you could use really any other oil of your choice. The last ingredient we're going to add at this stage is some wax. I do recommend when you get wax that you make sure it is in a palette or a flake form. It just makes it much easier to deal with and it melts a lot quicker as well. So we're going to be adding about 20 grams of our wax. So I'm just gonna put this now over some boiling water until it all melts down and my liquid is completely clear. 
Our next step is going to add some of our dry ingredients. So we're starting off with some bentonite clay. So this has really great healing properties as well as helping to keep your armpits dry. So we're going to pop in 15 grams of this. And next we're going to use arrowroot powder and we also have 15 grams of this that we're putting in. Now normally you'll find most deodorant paste recipes call for baking soda, but as there are a lot of people that find baking soda irritates their skin, I prefer using the clay and the arrowroot. Now we're going to put in some nice oils. So I'm going to put in about five drops of vitamin E oil, which will also help to really nourish your skin. And lastly is our essential oils to make this smell really nice and to help you smell good during the day as well. I have two favorites I love putting in my deodorant. One of them is patchouli and the other one is lemongrass. So I'm gonna put about 10 to 15 drops of each of these into my mixture. Now essential oils naturally have healing properties. They're antibacterial and antiviral, so they will help to keep the smell that forms with the bacteria from your body odor. They'll help keep that away. If you prefer a scent-free deodorant, so that maybe your whole family can use it, you can omit the essential oils, they are optional. Right, we are just going to stir that all up now. This is the point too where you can adjust the smell. You can add more essential oils if you want it to smell a little bit stronger. Keep in mind you want it to smell stronger here because when you put it on your skin, it will dilute the scent. Now I'm just going to pour that into my glass jar. Because I have used essential oils, I'm going to make sure that I store this in a glass jar. Need to leave that to set. I hope you enjoyed this really quick, easy deodorant DIY. Let us know on our Facebook page at The Table TV Show. If you try this and what you think about it, we would love to hear from you. Now there's one to try. <laughs> you know, I hope my, Mandy comes and like shows us a demo on how you actually apply that. Yes. <laughs> yes. Not yes. in the colour. No, no. no. We'll get but it'd be better than toothpaste. <laughs> Na natural, <laughs> natural toothpaste. Don't knock it till you've tried it. How do you apply that? <laughs> Not with a with toothbrush. A toothbrush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mercy, move on. I really <laughs> Now it's time to talk about this. This topic actually had me in hysterics. It was of a mother who shared her story of her three-year-old toddler who was fashion obsessed and styled her for a whole week. From Monday through to Sunday, this lady was wearing what her three-year-old toddler had picked up for her. And what was funny about it was that one day she had a bright yellow dress. The next day she was in a full-on gown. She had short, short denim shorts one day <laughs> and a Mickey Mouse top the next. Like, you can't go wrong with that. <laughs> Ladies, when do you You think... can go wrong with yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, romper.com is where the article is, so be sure to check that out. But, ladies, when do you think is a good time to let your kids pick their own outfits? Ooh. It depends Their on outfits it... or my outfits? Well, both. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? Depends Why... on the occasion. Like, if they want to go play, that's fine. They can wear whatever they want. If they're going to a wedding, I'm going to have a say in it. Have you ever had... You've got three daughters. Yes. Have you ever had... Like problems with No, my second daughter's got great sense of fashion, so I actually ask her for advice sometimes because oh, wow. I clearly don't, <laughs> but she does. Um, yeah, so I would ha I would happily have a go at that experiment. I reckon letting her dress me, not not my other two girls, because we'd end up in a lot of Mickey Mouse or really, <laughs> really other Cinderella awful. outfits. <laughs> Yeah, but I reckon it's an expression of, like, who they are. Let them start from a young, but there's a time and a place to do it. And what age did you start letting your girls... Two. You know, start? Two. As sure. soon as they could dress themselves. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, you why not? Them, do you let them pick the entire outfit, or is it just, like... Sometimes. Outfit? I've let my daughter go to church in her Anna princess outfit and pink boots. Oh, I'm like, I love I am not that. having the fight. Knock yourself out. Yeah. That's right. I think you have to pick your battle sometimes <laughs> yeah. with the kids. And um, on mornings where it's like we're rushing to get to yeah. church... Wear that, wear yes. those tights, whatever. Yes. Just wear those runners, whatever the case is. God loves you always. Mm. Yeah. I don't have that experience yet because Jax isn't old enough, but I think a compromise could be at least letting him choose one thing, you know? So, like, if I choose the outfit, like, what socks do you want to wear? Well, you've got gonna... great fashion sense, so Jax is on the right track yeah. already. Yeah. Mm. I'm sure, um, hopefully, he, he gets his mum's fashion sense we'll or is, is your <laughs> we'll husband see. on the fashionable <laughs> side as well. Moving on.
<laughs> no comment. <laughs> We're doing a lot of moving on today. What about you? You've got boys. Yep, I just let them go. Once yeah. they were old enough to dress themselves, I let them go. That's it. It's mm. so much easier when they're doing it. Yeah, it's one less tough to I do. Don't, I don't have the energy for that argument. Yeah, look, I don't think many of us have that time for the, that argument. But, like, let us know what you think. Do you let your kid dress themselves up, let alone dress yourself? Check out that article on romper.com. It's really funny. But now it's time for Gia and Olive, who are cooking Uncle Anja's hummus. 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 Hi, my name's Olive and this is my mummy and today we're making hummus. We are, we're making Uncle Anja's hummus, aren't we? I call it Uncle Anja's hummus because uh, I was inspired by him when I went over one day. He puts lemon rind in his hummus, something I never used to do and now I'm doing and it's delicious. So we thought we'd give you a base recipe for it because we do have hummus on our website. Uh, in another recipe. This one is two cans of chickpeas. The reason why I use two cans of chickpeas is because I like to make a big or large amount, so that way I've got some for the week. Uh, for kids' lunches, you can use it for your own lunch. I use one large lemon. Can you put it in? Yeah, you can pour it in there. Hold on. One large lemon. If you don't have a large one, just two small lemons. Ooh. Oh! Whoa, that's what happens. Here, let's put it to the side. <laughs> And the, and the lemon rind. Wash if you can see hand. this, oh, I've just grated it with a grater. Oh, wash my hands. Okay, here you go. You can wash your hands. Go on. All done. Come back. Use that to dry your hands. Oh. Use that to dry your hands. That's what happens. Okay, sorry. What? All right, so the lemon rind. We'll just throw the lemon rind in there. And tahini. One and a half tablespoons of tahini. The reason why I add a little bit extra tahini is because I don't like using too much oil, as you already know, so I'm just going to put the tahini in there because there's plenty of fat in the tahini and lots of oil in it as well. Yeah! Yeah! And do you want to put the juice from the can of chickpeas? Now, this is the trick. This juice from the can of chickpeas actually helps it become really fluffy. I don't know if you know much about aquafaba. If you blend it, it becomes like egg white, so it's all fluffy and nice. And do you want to put those in there? What are they? Onion. No? Try again? Garlic. Garlic, that's it. Two cloves of garlic. And I will use one table, oh, teaspoon of salt. <laughs> Let me put it in. Okay. Good work. You've done well. So yummy for you, buddy. <laughs> OK. All right. Are you going to switch it on for me? All right, let's put it on lower. Go. And we blend it. It's struggling again, so I add a little bit of water. A little bit of water. Whoa. Oh, oh, no, more lemon. <laughs> OK. I'm going to add more water, but this time I'm going to try not to tip it everywhere. So a little bit more water. That's it. Wow, I think I'm mastering it. OK, let's go. OK, so I just blended it until it was smooth. I don't like yeah. lumpy ones. I'll show you the texture. I'll just put that there. All right. Can you see the texture? It's nice and smooth and it's really fluffy. I'm actually going to put some in a bowl so that you can actually see. And like you saw on one of our last episodes, we added some chopped up dried, sun-dried tomatoes or you can put some olives on top, uh, whatever you like. Look how fluffy that looks. Do you want to try it? No. Oh, are you... Yeah. OK, go on. You try it. <laughs> Mmm, delicious. So, if you want to try any more of our recipes, please go to our website. It's thetabletv.com. Or you can follow us on Facebook on The Table TV Show. You can see some more recipes. There's one where I've got hummus and you can put sun-dried tomatoes on top and olives, whatever you like to make it fancy. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Try that. That's we'll just like our kitchen. Yeah, we'll have to get yeah. um, uh, Oliver raincoat for next yeah. time. It's like a water play. <laughs>
love your work, Gia. Look, if you'd like some more great recipes, we're giving away this little health and happiness cookbook this week. All you need to do is hit us up on social media or call us on Australia 1300 300 389 in New Zealand 0800 694 673. And it's free. Did I say that? It's free. So do get your hands on this book. But now, onto a topic that's been in the media a lot lately, volunteerism. Australian companies are calling for an end to volunteerism, with companies like World Challenge, um, who offered the biggest student volunteer orphanage programs, no longer offering that program. They say that volunteerism is actually more harmful than it is helpful. And um, I don't know, Rachel, what do you think about volunteerism and what's, what's your uh, perspective well, on this situation? reading about it really opens your eyes to what's going on because you think, you know, you're sending kids over there to do a great job, to look after these kids, maybe to build something for them. But then when you sort of read a bit deeper, it's a little bit confronting that it's affecting the kids over there. There are companies and orphanages that are setting themselves up purely to make money from this and some of those kids aren't orphans at all or they've just taken them from the community to sort of get tourists in and they're sort of milking off a system that is really designed to help someone but, you know, make money off it. So it's a bit confronting. Yeah, and I think that's the main concern. Like, Westerners apparently have been taking them for a ride because they're, with their generosity, they're opening their hearts, they're also opening their wallets, and so people are preying on that. Well, I guess some of these organisations are preying on mm. um, people donating to... Isn't that a risk, children. though, with anything? Like, any time you're generous, isn't there a risk that somebody's taking advantage of you? I know I'm from Chicago, and whenever we see people on the street, you know, people often say, don't give to them because they're taking advantage of you. And, I mean, it, should you just be not giving because you're worried about someone taking advantage of you? I think you need to be uh, aware yeah. of who's what the organisation is, what they're doing. Look into who you're giving to because, as most of you know, I spent a couple of years in Cambodia and some of the organisations were very reputable and they were taking in orphans or abused children. Others were just out there milking the system taking kids who already had families. That's so, the thing, mm, yeah. what Shona's saying. Apparently statistics show 80% of these children in orphanages um, actually have a surviving parent. Mm. But so, sometimes are they putting them in the orphan orphanage because they think that it might be a better situation for them? Yeah. Oh, that, that's what uh, some of these uh, organisations, the people that run it, are selling to families who, who need the help out there in st poverty-stricken places. Mm. They're, they're telling them that, you know, They'll get Western education. They're getting help by Westerners. So people are kind of being it's, duped. For yeah. me, I think you need to sort of look at an organisation that's helping the community. So they're going into a village or into a, a small suburb or whatever and actually helping them by giving them water or, you know, sanitation, uh, schools, that sort of thing. Not just one individual orphanage. They're actually helping the whole community. Yeah, definitely. Oh. I think you definitely need to do your research when it comes to volunteerism or, or any type of um, donation or charity that you might be looking into. But now it's time to get our exercise on. Alicia's teaching us how to plank. Side plank, that is. Let's check it out. <laughs> Alicia here, the table's personal trainer. Today we're going to look at a couple of core exercises that you can do anywhere at home that are really going to help that core stability, core strength and nice tight tummy come in. And we've got Shona here as our demo. Guinea pig? Guinea pig, <laughs> yes, yes, that's the one. Now, the one I want to show you to start with is called a side plank raise, okay? So basically you're going to come down on your side and if you want to just um, have this leg, this knee under the first, uh, the top one I should say, and then I want you to basically lengthen this leg out on the ground, like rest it, mm -hmm. and then I want you to basically make sure your hips are stacked right on top of each other, and then I want to get you to lift up your hips off the ground. So you're basically going to be resting on your elbow and on your knee. You are kidding, aren't you? <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Now, where this should be working is right through here in those side abdominals, okay? Good work, Shona. Yeah, and you know what? You're doing so well. And the whole idea is that you can just hold it there for a certain amount of time. Uh, are you feeling it, Shona? Um, yep. Yep, yep, that's a yes. That's an affirmative. Okay, good. So you can come down and rest for me. Thank you. Now, that was awesome. Now, where did you feel it? Could you feel it in sort of this area? I'll say yes. <laughs> Could you feel it in your shoulders yeah, as well? Yeah, my shoulders, yeah. yeah. And you definitely will feel it in your shoulders too because it's holding half your body weight there, Is right? there a wrong way of holding these poses? I mean... Um, 
Yeah, the, yeah. if you have your hips too far forward or too far back and your body is not straight, so you basically want to have your whole body aligned, so shoulders stacked above each other, hips, knees and toes essentially, right? Um, so yeah, that is really important and you want to pull that belly button in as well while you're doing it. So that, and what's really good about this exercise too is if you've had any abdominal separation after birth, side exercises are actually okay. It's the front crunching ones that want to push everything out out that are yeah. not good if you've had that separation but the side plank is one that you can do. Now I'm going to ask Rachel to come down on the ground and I'm going to show you the plank rotation. So what it is is you come into plank position, knees or toes is fine. Again you want to, yeah, knees. Just fine. <laughs> you want to have your, your back nice and straight, okay, and sort of drop those hips down for me. And from there I want you to open up your right hand and lengthen out your the leg that yet yeah, perfect. Oh, wow. Yep. Gotcha. Now come back down again, and then you can go to the other side and open up that way. Perfect. That's okay. form though, Rach. That's Beautiful great stuff. form. This is my calling, did I? <laughs> <laughs> great job. Again, this is getting into that side plank position, but from your hand instead. So it's just another variation of that exercise. And again, it's going to help work through the sides of your abdominals instead. And you know, like we always just see, you know, whenever you hear what's some core exercises or crunches is like mm. the only one that gets mentioned a lot of the time. Crunches are not the, the most effective. Um, plank is way more effective, but if you have have had that abdominal separation you, you want to go for more of the side plank instead um, and build up slowly and definitely check with a physio of course if you have had any of those issues but yeah I, I, I recommend it give it a go and as you can see you can do it from your knees once you go from your knees you can try it on your toes and that just makes it just that little bit more challenging and you can try and hold for as long as you can and one more thing you could do is if you're here and you get to the toe thing, you can then do some lifts. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> you could, good that's you. why you're a personal <laughs> trainer and we're not. Oh, I'm here to train <laughs> you. That's why we've got you. <laughs> yes. So anyway, if you enjoyed that, please jump on our YouTube channel. We've got plenty of 10 minute workouts there for you to do. And I'm sure that you will feel it in your core as well. Bye. Now joining us in the studio is Jane Gibson Opatia. She's from International Children Care Australia and we are blessed to have her. She's also a mother of four. Thanks Jane for joining us. Thank you ladies for having me. Yeah, now look, have, have, being involved in International Children's Care Australia, what sets your organisation apart from other charities? Sure. Uh, we're fairly unique. We have uh, a lot of programs. There were our sponsorship programs. We don't just support children in primary school. We go straight through to tertiary. We focus in four countries, Sri Lanka, Thailand, Cambodia and the Philippines. And we have a range of other projects such as microfinance. We um, rescue and help human traffic. What's microfinance? I read in the CEO's report something about uh, 2,000 women. You guys are helping 2,000 women and their families receive microfinance. What is yeah. it? <laughs> it's a small business loan and it just empowers them. It helps them, you know, to feel independent. Um, as, a, as a mum, I understand how it feels to want to provide for your children and that's what we do. We empower women to provide for their children. So it's not just about giving them uh, a fish and feeding them for a day, you're actually teaching them how to fish and letting them, you know, grow exactly. their businesses. Yeah. giving them at least a start at it anyway. Yeah. You were saying before you helped uh, with trafficking as well and girls within that situation. Can you tell me about those projects or that one? Yeah, we have the BLESS project in the Philippines. Um, as you know, the statistics are so high around the world, but particularly in the Philippines, we have set up a vocational training centre and um, transitional accommodation for those who are going through court cases or who, you know, are in the process of being freed by, by that... Um, yeah, that what, what's the situation there? What's going on? Are, are parents, do parents know that this is what their daughters are doing or are they trying to make money from their daughters doing this? What, what mm. is the situation? Look, there's a range of issues and there's a range of factors and um, interestingly enough, there's sometimes a, a case where the neighbour... Um, you know, sells off that child or oh. yeah. or parents have sent their children to their aunt to be to be cared for and the child has disappeared. Hoping for that they'll have a better life and, right. and then this is what happens. Mm. Jane, can you help us understand a little bit more about what's happening in those four countries, why, why you've chosen those four countries to um, focus your work on? Sure. Uh, we work in partnership 
with um, other organisations and with other partners in, in those particular countries. Um, that's where some of our specialties lie and a lot of our staff are very familiar with that and also the people that we work with, uh, a lot of the locals and community groups that we work with um, are quite stronger in terms of our relationship at this time with them. So you also have an uh, adopted child? In, yeah, yeah. We, we sponsor children. Yeah. Yep. So um, we have children's villages in each of those countries and we have opportunities available where people can sponsor children in those countries and they reside in a village but they're also put through the school that's attached to that. So we're very proud of the children moving from primary school to right through to tertiary and graduating and, and serving and, and giving back to the community. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah it is. Yeah. Yeah, because once you educate, then you change the community and the village, don't you? Yeah, that's right. Jade, from a personal note, what made you get into international... Well, doing charity work, what made you, you know, want to work for ICCA? Sure. I was in aid in development a few years back and I've moved into a range of other not-for-profit sectors, corporate, and I really missed... Um, being engaged with different communities at this particular level. There was an opportunity at International Children's Care um, Australia and I and and you know, it was just pretty much within a week I think the process took and I was there um, and what really captured my heart was experiencing um, Cambodia, the, the trip last December did you with my go, teenager. Yeah, you went with your teenager? Okay, I was going to say, did you go with your family? or? Yeah. yeah, I did. I went with my husband and um, one of my four children and, and she's a teenager and it really transformed all our lives. You know, How we, did she find it? How did your teenager find it? Like, how did she come back? Yeah. Oh, I just, look, she came back. She was intent on getting a job. She took up a sponsorship. She engages more. She doesn't ask for anything anymore. She doesn't want to go shopping. Well, that um, works, right? Oh, <laughs> it was like, you know, <laughs> a blessing. Because she had seen how privileged we are here in the Western world. Is that what That's she right. witnessed? Yeah, and she participated in a big build trip. So all of our um, volunteer groups that go over go for a particular service. We have school groups that go for community development and they also do education, so they get involved with teaching English as a second language. So do you um, have to be qualified to, to do this kind of volunteer work, like when they're going over and, and doing these teaching programs? Uh, no. Well, um, we set up specific programs that are relevant to that. So, you know, the, this we've got two school groups currently in Cambodia at the moment who are serving in terms of education. Education um, and community development and, and they're in their teenage years and, and really making a difference. You know, sometimes it seems like we think about how um, people are receiving the help when we go, yeah. but it seems like there's a lot of impact that happens to the people who are going on the trips as well. Have you seen a, a lot yeah, of that with the groups right. that go over, that they're experiencing some sort of change? Yeah, they're, they're really transforming. I think the bonding that takes place is really priceless. From that particular trip with my teenager, she bonded with at least 30 other young teenagers. Wow. They reunited this year earlier at a wow. big camp in Queensland. Um, they were helping out me out at the stall. They were, you know, talking about their experiences and sharing. And also they talked about what, what the locals were doing for them. It wasn't just this, you know, one way. So experience. if anybody's interested in, in finding out about some of these um, charities that the in your organisation, where can we find you? Sure. www iccaustralia.org and you're welcome to our next trip in 2019 to the Philippines where we serve Bless Project. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jane, for joining us. Really appreciate your time and you're doing great stuff, International Children's Care Australia. You heard, the, heard it from her, iccaustralia.org. That's the place to check it out. Ladies, thanks for the chat. Until next time, have an awesome week. God bless.